So the question I want to ask everybody, it's an invitation that I want all of you to engage in this morning with me, is how might we envision the Internet of Things? When I got asked to come and speak at this event, um, the organizers said, would you do this? And of course I would. Uh, I'm a proud alumni. I would, I would be more than happy to support this. I'm a knight first. Knights go into service. Awesome. When I started saying, okay, what's the topic? The Internet of Things. Great. Um, what do you want me to speak about? Well, that's up to you. Okay. So being a technologist um, and knowing that it's going to be Saturday of Kogo, um, Saturday morning, don't know who the audience is going to be. It could be alumni, students, family, friends. I could talk technical, talk data. Okay, I just lost the children. Um, I could talk about security, cybersecurity. I lost the parents, not because they're not dis they're disinterested in it, they're chasing after the children. Um, and I've got some really interesting people that are wanting to understand where I work and why I'm talking about cybersecurity. I didn't want to get technical with this. I wanted to get everybody involved and engaged. I want you to think, and I want you to envision what the inter Internet of Things could become. Because honestly, you're going to hack the model anyway, and you already have, and I'm going to prove it. In my journey to get here, however, it was a little bit difficult to find the message. Um, talked with a few people about what what would really be profound and interesting on a Saturday morning to come and talk with all of these people that are going to want to be here to listen to me? And luckily, I reached out to somebody, a dear friend of mine. She's magical, and I say that in the truest sense of the word. She is a master prop master. Um, she is someone that all of you, if you've been down to any of the theme parks in Florida, uh, have probably experienced her work and has somehow touched you. Her and I had a great discussion about where this whole event, uh, what the message should be, uh, what I should be talking about. And in our discussions, she evoked some really powerful memories that I, I haven't thought about in years, but they're the things that hit me every day. Earlier today, one of our speakers said, everyone's creative, and you are. So here's how you get into your, your inner creative. It's almost noon. It's on Saturday. Way back in the day, for some of us at least, that were, were young way back when, used to get into Saturday morning cartoons. With that, you would watch these things, uh, that, that half hour, hour, parents would get off your back, your flights of fancy, your imagination goes wild, and you're not thinking about the problems of the day. Um, doesn't matter what your favorite cartoons were, but the image that um, my friend Christine invoked in me brought me back to a time where it was before the Internet of Things. In fact, it was before the Internet. It was in a time where uh, instead of when I look at my daughter looking at this little device that she'll literally run into the wall if I don't stop her uh, because she's texting, it was a larger device, sometimes in color, sometimes in black and white. The chattering cyclops, as I think my, my dad called it. But there were cartoons, and some good ones, if you watch Tom and Jerry, they could tell a story without ever using words or dialogue. The writers and the illustrators on that would sometimes be given uh, liberty to go and create one-offs. Not the Tom and Jerry cartoon, but you'd see the car of tomorrow, the house of tomorrow, the farm of tomorrow. <clears throat> it's scary to go watch these. You can go, go out to Google, you can go out to YouTube and see them. A um, couple of minutes, they may inspire. I think they're going to, and I'm going to prove it to you in the next couple of minutes. So as I was growing up, big geek and a big nerd, I love it. I love comic books, I love the cartoons, to the point where in watching The House of Tomorrow, on the left-hand side you see this gadget, 
that they came up with in 1949 that, you know, you have make things dry, make things moist, there's all, all sorts of things on there. And it's kind of funny that that in 2016 is part of the Nest thermometer. And it's an internet of things. Go forward, you find our favorite uh, government agent, Dick Tracy, uh, clad in shiny yellow because that is the most nondescript thing that an agent can be dressed in while going to surveil somebody. Um, but he had this fantastic device. It was a two-way TV transmitter. How many in the audience have an Apple iWatch or a smartwatch right now? Kind of funny, art leading into technology. Lastly, I can't imagine ever having been at Clarkson in my time here and not have been binging on Star Trek on the weekends. My captain that I grew up with before all the other incarnations was Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk, when I saw it, it was in the 70s, 80s, but you see devices that are in these shows, the communicator, the tricorder, the transporter, they're all devices that writers made creatively to enable the story to go forward. So that at the time when I was growing up, the phone was something that had a wire to the wall. The communicator didn't. The communicator was this awesome device that you flip it open, you heard that squeak, and he's talking with somebody somewhere else. Kind of like this. This prop, if you were my age, you were wanting one of those. This was the type of thing that inspired. So much so that when, in the middle of the 90s, I was working for Motorola, and it's by design that the Razor phone has the same hinge mechanism that a communicator would. Because you had a bunch of geeks and nerds and people that loved that and embraced it and really wanted to create what they saw in art. So everybody is creative, 100%. What I'll ask each of you to do as part of this dialogue is as you run forward outside of this event, as you're at Kogo, as you go home, as you're on your, your breaks, your summer breaks, on your family vacations, remember some of these icons, these artists. Because while I'm a technologist, and I can, I've been working and slaving in the areas to bring elegant solutions to exquisite problems, just like you saw in the Saturday morning cartoon that I just played, Disney, Brought, brings magic in his kingdoms. Other people take you to areas that are, um, surprisingly, galaxies far, far away in a time when, long, long ago, where's our lightsabers? And before you go, go boldly, think of the last guy, because what I'm giving to you this Saturday is the ability with Great power comes great responsibility. I'm asking each of you as you leave, as you think, how might we envision the Internet of Things? How might we continue that? I'd love to see you go and participate in the conversation, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Use that hashtag. Or use the hashtag, what if? Because those are the most powerful questions that you can ask and start the dialogue so that we can not worry about what the Internet of Things is now, but what it is next. Thank you. <laughs>